Hi, it's Michael Senoff with Michael Senoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. The title of this interview is called Real Help for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Children That Will Keep the Whole Family on Track. For a child with ADD or ADHD, even the simplest of tasks can be a huge struggle, and parents may find themselves worn down and frustrated with kids who seem to be spacey or hyper while needing constant reminders just to stay on track. But according to Ned Howell, psychiatrist and author of Super Parenting for ADD, there is hope. And in this audio, you'll hear how to find the strengths and talents of your ADD child while also helping them stay focused and happy. You'll also hear the truth behind ADD and ADHD and how to know if your child has it. You'll learn the one best way to set up a treatment plan that will work for your family. You'll learn key strategies for parents regarding nutrition and routine that may curb ADD symptoms without the use of medicine. You'll learn the almost magic way to create a connected atmosphere team to increase the areas that your child can thrive. You'll learn how to make sure your child is getting the right medication and dosage. You'll learn the five-step process that creates a cycle of excellence for kids with ADD. According to Ned, love is the best and most obvious intervention, but unfortunately it's also the one that may get lost along the way. Many kids with ADD encounter constant reprimands and reminders about how they're doing things wrong, and as a result, their self-esteem may easily become damaged. But fortunately, ADD is manageable and shouldn't hold the child back from achieving at any level. In fact, many famous artists, CEOs, doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and athletes have ADD. And in this audio interview, you'll also hear how to help your child unwrap his talents while making his and your life significantly more manageable with the right treatment plan in place. Now let's get going. Hi, this is Chris Costello, and I've teamed up with Michael Senoff to bring you the world's best health-related interviews. So if you know anyone struggling with their weight, with cancer, diabetes, ADHD, autism, heart disease, or other health issues, send them over to Michael Senoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. In your book, Super Parenting for ADD, you call love the essential strength in the most difficult and most important job in the world, raising a child. Now, what was your inspiration to approach ADD from this perspective? To me, it's the most obvious thing in the world, and yet doctors don't talk about it. We don't use the word love. There's absolutely no intervention that you could possibly describe that even approaches love in terms of its power and importance. And I just wanted to put it front and center, chapter one, and make sure that parents realize if they trust in that power of love over time. You see, love doesn't work overnight. It works over many years. But if they trust in that, they'll absolutely get the best outcome. Instead of all these various interventions that are all fine, various kinds of interventions that we have, it's important to keep in perspective that by far the most important one is love. And it's particularly important for these kids with ADD, ADHD, because they often don't get love. They often get nothing but reprimands. They often get nothing but consequences and punishments and reminders of the ways in which they're deficient, disordered, disabled, and defective. And that, over time, absolutely crushes them and you get really negative outcomes. My first rule of parenting, and I say this to all parents, is enjoy your children. If you're enjoying them, having fun with them, doing things that both of you like, you're doing it right. And a lot of parents with these kids, they don't enjoy them. The parents don't enjoy them, and the kids don't have fun with the parents, and they just spend their days in struggle. And that is not good. You really need to revise your approach so that you allow for special time, so that you allow for fun time, so that you go on a search for the kids' talents and interests and you promote them. Now, of course, I'm not saying you ignore the problem, not at all, but by far the best results you'll get if whatever you do is done in a context of love and play and fun. You know, it's one thing to say love is good, and I don't think anyone would argue with that. But then how does that translate into reality? And it doesn't just mean you hug and kiss your child all day, although hugging and kissing is wonderful. You know, part of love is setting limits. Part of love is saying no. Part of love is taking the time that it takes to set up a structure, you know, a time that you get up, 
a routine for getting dressed in the morning. A lot of kids with ADD have the hardest time simply getting dressed. You know, their socks are all over the house, their homework is strewn about, you know, brushing their teeth, they get lost on the way to the bathroom. The simplest of instructions can be difficult to carry out, and so you need to set up structures and routines that allow for these things to happen without a struggle. And again, that's not easy. That takes work, that takes experimentation, it takes patience. You have to hold on to your sense of humor. So this is what I mean by applying love, that it's not easy to do always. And you really do need help. It's very hard to do it alone. You need a team. If you're a single parent, you know, you need to create a team involving a teacher, a pediatrician, an uncle, a godparent, a coach, other neighbors. You want as big a team as you can to help you create the structures and develop the kind of what I call connected atmosphere for this child to grow up in. If you grow up in a positively connected atmosphere, you're going to thrive. But if you don't, it's going to be very hard to thrive. And a lot of kids with ADHD grow up very disconnected. They grow up without the kind of supervision, without the kind of friendships, without the inspirational relationships, the charismatic teacher or coach, the chance to shine somewhere. They grow up without these sorts of connections. And without that, it's very difficult to flourish as you go on in life. And you've had clients where you've seen this difference with love applied? Oh, absolutely. In fact, all of my clients benefit from that. But it takes time. You see, the people who only see me for a month or two to get diagnosed and started, they don't fare as well as the ones who keep checking in over the years and, you know, allow me to sort of coach them in creating this kind of connected world. Now, that is not to say you have to keep seeing me for years. Some do a very good job at just taking my suggestions and implementing them. But certainly, I can say that all of my best outcomes, all of the kids and and adults, for that matter, who have done the best are the ones who really take this idea of love and connection very seriously and translate it into practical reality. I have a whole kind of roadmap of what I mean by a connected childhood, and I talk about developing a host of different kinds of connections, whether it's to your neighborhood or to school or to a pet or to special places and activities. All of that and more, you know, spiritual connection, a connection to the past, to traditions, all of that is part of a connected childhood. And you notice as I tick them off, they're all free. That's the beauty of this special force called connection. It's free. It's readily available in life. The supply is infinite, but you do have to tap into it. It doesn't just happen automatically. You do have to cultivate connection. It's sort of like growing a garden. You have to cultivate it, and you also have to weed it, get rid of the bad connections, and you also be careful not to overplant it. Don't make your child too busy. Don't make your child too connected, because then the, the growth gets choked out. So it's a matter of pruning, cultivating, weeding, and then enjoying. Enjoying. Don't try to smooth out their rough edges. Enjoy their rough edges. Celebrate them. You know, think of them as delightful, charming, idiosyncratic. You don't want to turn this kid into just like everybody else. Sure, you need to teach him to be appropriate, not disruptive. You need to teach him how not to offend other people because of lack of social graces and whatnot. But that's a far cry from telling him to squelch and sit on his real self. You want to help him learn how to be his real self, but in a way that others can enjoy rather than be upset by. And what are some tips for parents regarding raising kids with ADD? I start with this connected childhood and love, and then you want to pay attention to basic physical factors. Exercise, sleep, proper nutrition matters a lot, too. There's good evidence that additives, sugar, junk food exacerbates ADD. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the Internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com, and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word -word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.